All right, everyone. I'm going to do a little bit of a look into the post-match analysis from yesterday, and then because that was more interesting than the game itself, by all accounts, and then look at the bigger picture of the club. In Sky Sports Studio, they were talking about you know lack of style of play. Um, what are they trying to achieve, United? And they were they mentioned that in the first 25 minutes, United did okay. The way that they spoke about it was the way that you'd speak about it if it was Brentford or Watford or, um, I don't know, uh, another also ran Fulham playing against City. That would be all right if for 25 minutes they hung in the game. Like Jamie Carragher said, United play underdog football. This is Man United. And I'm not saying they're wrong, by the way, to say that we did all right to stay in the game for the first 25 minutes. But the standards of the club have been driven so low that what we're basically saying is, um, not getting smashed for 25 minutes is somehow doing all right. That's where we're at. We haven't got players good enough to do anything more than that, but that's a real indicator of just how much we are struggling and just how poor we are and the standards of the club, as I said. I was away in Spain last week, not that you'd know it, but um, I was talking to another Red about Bellingham and we both said... Any time between the mid-90s and 2005 that a player of that talent, an English player of that talent, came became available, he's a once-in-a-generation talent, there's not even a question United would sign him. It would 100% we'd sign him. And we're not even in the conversation for Bellingham. He wouldn't want to come to United. Uh, we ain't got the money anyway. It, it, again, another indicator of how far the club has fallen under this ownership. Brings me to the second point people on Twitter last night every time we, we get beat the same questions asked what's going wrong with United who's to blame hmm bit of a strange one is it can't quite put my finger on it are you joking it's obvious what's wrong with United the owners have have strategically stripped the club of of everything its soul any morsel of, of ambition or standards as I just mentioned before they they pay title winning wages to mid table players then you can't get rid of them because they're on too much they're commercially driven everything it comes back to the glazers they've run the club for 18 years they've certainly run it for the last 10 since ferguson retired so everything you see out there is a result of them they're the problem they needed to go that was the change that needed to happen all the rest of it is symptoms it's symptomatic of them so we can go on forever more about perhaps we don't rate the fullback or maybe the manager's not good enough or do we need a ball playing goalkeeper or do we need a shot stopping goalkeeper? They might all feel relevant things to talk about when the grand scheme of things, they're symptoms and they're going to continue to happen while the Glazers remain in place. It's, that's the answer to the question. And let's look, move on and look at that then, the bigger picture stuff. Um, two weeks down the line from the story that broke on Sir Jim Ratcliffe, I've still got as many I've got more questions than I have answers. It still doesn't add up to me. Um, by all accounts, let's just round it up. He's given a billion, one point five billion pounds. That isn't going to all go to the club. That's going to be divvied up three ways between the Glazers, the shareholders, and then the club. So who knows how much the club's going to get? Seven hundred million. Let's be optimistic. The club needs three billion pounds spending on it in the next two or three years to bring it up to par with Arsenal, Spurs, Newcastle. Not even the big hitters in Europe. So it doesn't touch the sides to what we need. Um, doesn't make sense to the Glazers. For me, there must be something going on that I don't know about because they've just turned down a billion pounds each as siblings, pretty much, rounding it up from the Qataris when, what are they going to get from this? 600 million? So that's 100 million each. A lot of money to me and you. To them, they've just turned down a bill, they've just turned down a bill each. So based on what? Based on what ifs? We might be able to be in the Club World Cup. We might be able to be in the expanded Champions League. Well, we're not going to be because the team's not good enough. We haven't got money to spend on the team. And even if we did have money to spend on the team, the people that would, are doing that are idiots. And, and there's no track record to say we'd finish consistently high in the league anyway. What about the TV rights? We can negotiate our own TV rights. That's a license to print money. Mm, is it? I, I, there'd be a lot of money, there'd be a steady stream you can guarantee they'd get their horrible little mitts on it yeah they would but that's not billions and and this complete fantasy that the club's going to be worth double in a certain amount of time is just that, it's a fantasy 
because for it to be worth doubling in a certain amount of time, five, ten years, whenever, we need to put that three billion pound into it now, and that's not going to happen. So they must know something that we don't. Sir Jim Ratcliffe, does he have an obligation to buy, or is it just an option to buy? What if in five years' time they're going to want seven billion because they've just turned down six? Is he, where's he going to find the money to buy them out in five years, three years, whenever? Probably going to put the club in further debt to do it, but. If he had the money, he'd do it now, surely. Um, so what if that's okay? Let's play devil's advocate and say that we we go with not play as devil. Let's let's play it out, and say they go with this option with Sir Jim with a five year plan to to be out of the club by that time. He ain't got the money to do it, and then what do we do? Because by that point, the club's going to be worth next to nothing. So they put it up for sale again, and then you've got to appease six Glazer siblings, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos and the shareholders that remain in place, which is an incredibly complicated deal to do when you're not going to get a lot of money for the club. So so they must know something that you, me, and the media don't know that guarantees them seven, eight billion in a certain amount of time. And that worries me as to what that might be, because there's no way they'd stay, they'd stay otherwise. And the reasons that are being put out there are just, as I said, don't make sense for, for ha and I've just explained why they don't make sense. Looking at it from a United fans perspective and Sir Jim Ratcliffe, um, so many questions. Uh, so let's go with the sporting control one. Um, if if he had full sporting control, I'd feel a bit better about it. But I'll come back to why I'd only feel a bit about a bit better about it in a, in, a, in a few moments. But let's say the Glazers, Sir Jim, and, and the shareholders, whatever, they get together, and for the next summer transfer window, they have a certain budget. It'll be pretty low, I imagine. But because Sir Jim maybe knows a few decent people in the game and he gets some decent recruitment people and he gets a director of football in, it's a bit slicker and he can unco they uncover some gems that within that um, limited budget we can get some good deals over the line. My fear was Joel Glazer would still have the final decision and it sounds like he's going to sit on a board and probably will have that final decision. If he has the final decision, there is absolutely no point in, in sorting all the football stuff out because he's just gonna he's just gonna veto it and sabotage it like he did with Ralph Ranyek. Ralph Ranyek knew what he was talking about, put loads of ideas to Joel Glazer and he said no to all of them and then sacked Ralph Ranyek because Ralph Ranyek called it out. So it appears to me that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has paid one point five billion pounds to become a glorified Ralph Ranyek. Even if he had full sporting control, I'm still not gonna be cock a hoop about that because What's his background? What's his pedigree of, of doing well in, in football? He hasn't got one. So he didn't do, he's not done very well at Nice. I don't know about the Swiss club. His success in sport is in cycling and Formula One and sailing and stuff like that. It's not, not even in the same ballpark as football. He hasn't got any pedigree at all. So I'd feel a bit better if he had sporting control because he'd be better than the Glazers because anyone would be. But he's not best in class like we need. And we still haven't got the money to do what we need to do anyway. I, I think if, if Sir Jim Ratcliffe bought the whole club, he wouldn't be my preference. I'd want Sheikh Jazim. But I'd celebrate because the Glazers would have left. If he bought 70% or 50% of the club and the Glazers stayed with a silent minority and, and basically just sat there and took a few quid here or there, I wouldn't be happy with it, but I could probably make peace with it. But this 25% mate just makes no sense whatsoever. It's not a deal that, that works, in my mind, to any, for anybody. Um, very, very concerning. It's a different shade of the same shit, I'm afraid. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't do a video on Sir Bobby Charlton because I just didn't think anything I had to say would be befitting of the legacy that the guy has left at the club. He's a pillar of everything we used to stand for. Um, and I went down to Old Trafford the Sunday after it happened, after he died, and I took down my 1968 uh, European Cup final shirt and I, I placed it down. I took my two two of my boys with me. and um, it, it felt, just being there felt different. It, I didn't feel connected to the club. I looked around at it. No, I haven't been to the games for a long time, but I, whenever I go to Old Trafford for different reasons or drive past it, it's like, there it is, the theatre of dreams, the feeling they get, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I didn't get any of that. And it was really sad. And I thought, actually, Sir Bobby's passing is indicative of the club. The, the, he's a patron of the club. He's 
he's everything like i said we used to stand for he's gone and with him goes i think another pillar of what what we represent and and it's symbolic the club's dying um i don't want to sound insensitive i'm a very sensitive and and uh, sentimental person but the timing of sir bobby's death to some degree has let the club off the hook a little bit because um quite rightly you're not going to be protesting about Sir Jim Ratcliffe when you've just lost someone like Sir Bobby Charlton. So we've had two home games and there's not been a really a, even a mention of the takeover or lack of it because quite rightly it's been about Sir Bobby Charlton. But in many ways now that's the, the storm has calmed and not that there would be anything to write home about anyway, I would have thought. But um, over the last year as a club, as a fan base, they've not done enough. They've not been anywhere near enough to... Uh, to get rid of the Glazers when I, and I think there's lo loads more we could have done I've said it lots of times that probably would have forced the issue and what we're left with now is uh, you know you reap what you sow you, it's, there's a lot more of the same sort of stuff to come I'm afraid um, there's no way that this deal the 25% is going to harness any differences we might have some initial bounce from it but long term we're going to be back where we are now in in roughly two or three years i, I would predict um it's an incredibly sad situation um the deal hasn't been done you know there's still people out there that are suggesting that the qataris have not gone away and that they won't and that this has been spun by the english media and whatever else but you know the large consensus is this is pretty much a done deal that they're dotting the i's and crossing the t's and that it'll be it'll be done I'm, I'm hoping that um you know like in a in a game where a team's not played particularly well and they're losing one nil and the commentator always says you hang in there long enough there's all you're always going to get a chance towards the end of the game you always get one chance you know c could could something happen for us as a fan base i mean that that someone comes in or Shake Shake Jazim comes back in or whatever. I hope so because if not, um, we are faced with what we've got at the moment for the the foreseeable and, and unfortunately long term future, if you can even call it that. Glazers out. <laughs>